Welcome back, DPV TV viewers. It is Chris Nichols here, and look what I've got a production Fujifilm X-H2S. Now we did in a previous video look at a pre-production version of this and we covered what we could. We were able to talk about things like button controls, ergonomics, handling, some of the features, but we weren't really able to get into the heavy testing. I definitely encourage you to check out that previous video because we're not going to retread a lot of that ground, but today we're going to cover things like how is the autofocus working on this, the buffer rates, image quality, dynamic range, video capabilities. I mean these are things you do not want to miss, so let's get to it. So the first thing we should talk about is displays on the Fujifilm X-H2S and how that's changed now going to production camera. So we did notice a few issues and the first one in video mode, especially in F-Log, when we do our punch and focus, the resolution dropped quite a bit and I'm happy to say that that is completely gone. Whether you're doing punch and magnification for stills or videography, it's very sharp, very easy to manually focus with. So I'm happy to say that that's completely rectified. When you look at this camera, it has a top LCD panel a lot like the X-H1 has and some of the GFX bodies have. The first thing we noticed was when you're looking at it under certain light, I can see it right now, it actually flickers on you and it's kind of a strange thing. It is still present here in the production camera. Now, you know, Jordan brings up a point that you could sometimes see this flickering and think, oh, maybe I forgot to turn my camera off. But actually, I have a quick fix for this. Instead of having white on black, just set it to the black on white mode. Fixed, looks beautiful. You know, overall, the X-H2S has one of the best setups for displays that we've seen on an APS-C camera. We love the EVF, 5.76 million dots. We love the fully articulating screen. And I mean, this camera really has a fantastic display setup. So we wanted to test the buffer out on the Fujifilm X-H2S and the production camera here. So here's the criteria used for testing that. We're shooting 40 frames per second. That's the maximum burst rate in electronic shutter mode. We're shooting raw only, lossless compressed. The autofocus is locked off, of course. And of course, the X-H2S takes both SD cards and CF Express. So we wanted to test both. So using a very fast UHS-2 V90 rated SD card, this is what we got. Roughly about 150 shots in that range. So just under four seconds of sustained burst rate. Like most cameras at that point, once the buffer's filled, it slows down dramatically to basically a crawl, you know, and at that point you really want to stop, let that rebuffer so you can shoot some more. So overall, that's not a bad result with SD cards. I certainly wouldn't feel undergunned in most action situations, but if I was going to shoot critical wildlife, sports, journalism, I'd really want to go to a faster CF Express card. Here's what we got for that. And this is a little bit tricky because we got about 180 shots at 40 frames per second, where the camera then slowed down to about 20 frames per second and continued to shoot. Now it's tricky because you don't necessarily notice that slowdown. It's still an incredibly fast burst rate. And that went on to about 280 shots. So we're getting a long extension. It's just we're not getting 40 frames per second the entire time. That still does give us though a much longer burst rate before the camera's gonna chug and slow down. And I think if you are shooting any sort of serious sports action or wildlife, CO Express is the way to go. Now the Fujifilm X-H2S is using a stacked sensor and it has a pretty respectably fast readout speed when you're using electronic shutter mode, which makes sense because this kind of camera, because of those fast burst rates, you may very well want to shoot this in electronic shutter mode in a lot of situations. But like many cameras, we usually sacrifice a bit of dynamic range when using that electronic shutter. Especially so here, we're curious about that because in F-Log2 mode, this camera shoots with a slower read speed, but gets more dynamic range in video. When we shoot regular video modes, it shoots a faster readout speed, but we lose a bit of dynamic range. And we look at the stills on this camera in electronic shutter mode, the readout speed is very similar to the video modes with less dynamic range. So we expect we're gonna lose some, but we're gonna do some tests, have a look at those just a bit, and see just how much. Okay, so we're getting lots of sample photos and video, but we gotta take a look at it and evaluate it. So we will see you guys again shortly for day two, where we'll have our final conclusions. And we're back. It's time to finish our talk with the Fujifilm X-H2S. So image quality here. We were able to do some lab tests with the staff back in Seattle. And here's what we found. There's definitely a difference between the dynamic range you'll get from electronic shutter and mechanical shutter mode, like you see on a lot of other cameras. Now it's not a huge difference. We're losing about a third to a half a stop worth of dynamic range. But this does mean that if you want the most dynamic range possible, you want to shoot mechanical shutter. It also means that what we were talking about earlier, where 
The video is capable of getting that dynamic range back by slowing down its readout speed. Unfortunately, is not an option when it comes to stills. So we'd love to see Fujifilm incorporate a feature like this so that when we're shooting stills in electronic shutter mode, we wouldn't have to compromise on the dynamic range. We know that it's possible in F-Log2 in video and the readout speed on that is actually still faster than the Fujifilm X-T4 in its electronic shutter mode. So you're not gonna have massive rolling shutter or anything like that. The beauty there is you could shoot electronic shutter mode for say landscapes, for example, not get any shutter shock from the mechanical shutter and still get that excellent dynamic range. So that's something we'd love to see them incorporate. Hopefully their engineers are gonna get on it. Otherwise, the image quality overall is very reminiscent of what we see in the other high-end Fujifilm APS-C bodies like the X-T4, for example, which is to say excellent. I mean, we love this sensor. We love the image quality, the photos that we get out of it. So there's no complaints there. So overall, my experience with the new Fujifilm X-H2S is actually very similar to how it was with my initial review, but with some notable improvements. So first off, like all Fujifilm bodies, you absolutely want to set up the autofocus properly, the right mode, the right situation. I even like to customize and tweak how it handles tracking. But I will say, I had problems with the initial camera when it came to eye detective people portraits, and that is vastly improved here. I'm getting nice results, especially with static portraits or a little bit of movement. Here you can see my daughter just swinging back and forth casually, and the camera actually did a great job of just tracking the eye. We're not getting a lot of eyelash in focus or hair in focus. It really does like to go right to the eye, so I'm happy to see that. But I wanted to retest the face and eye detect with moving subjects fast towards the camera like we did in our initial review. Now, if I'm trying to shoot that 40 frame per second and the subject's coming towards me, well, first off, that's where I have to use release priority because if I have focus priority, I'm not gonna get anywhere close to that 40 frame per second frame rate. And frankly, although some of those shots are still absolutely usable, a fair number are out of focus. So I don't see much point using 40 frame per second if I've got a subject moving towards me. I would happily reduce that down to 10 or 15 frames per second, whether electronic or mechanical, go to focus priority, and then my hit rate was actually quite good. Now the team in Seattle had a chance to test autofocusing on their own Fujifilm X-H2S and they got pretty similar results to us. In fact, they were able to shoot up to about 20 frames per second with a near perfect hit rate. So very good success there. So then the team tested 30 frames per second and actually found the hit rate was pretty good. We actually got a lot of keepers, not as good as 20 frames per second, but definitely usable. So then we decided to push it to the maximum 40 frames per second. But they found the same situation that when going up to 40 frames per second, the amount of shots that they got in focus dropped substantially. In fact, they got less shots in focus shooting at 40 frames per second than they did even shooting at 20 frames per second. It seems that the X-H2S has a hard time both autofocusing and pushing that 40 frame per second uh, frame rate. So again, just like we found, that 40 frame per second can be absolutely useful for stationary subjects where autofocus is not being tested in a critical way. But if you want to get a better success rate, you really do need to drop that frame rate down. Now in our initial review with the pre-production camera, we had pretty good results with subject detection and I'd say it's even better here now on the production body. I'm actually really impressed with the new subject detection modes overall. I think this camera is focusing with an experience very similar to the other higher end Fujifilm cameras. I still do feel like Canon or Sony, their tracking focus, their face and eye detect works a little bit better in rapid movement situations. Now Jordan's been doing a lot of video tests as well, so let's head over to him now and see what he has to say about it. Also, we're gonna be switching from the GH6. Now I'll be shooting him on the Fujifilm X-H2S. All right, it's Jordan to talk about the video capabilities of the production X-H2S. And first of all, if you haven't already seen our earlier video, I ran through a lot of the specs, a lot of the features on that. Thing is, there were a few that I really couldn't test at that point, and that's what I really wanna focus on today. So let's kick things off with autofocus. The biggest improvement I've seen on the X-H2S compared to some of the other Fujifilm bodies is it just detects subjects very quick. It snaps on them almost immediately and then starts to drive the motor towards them. That's where I found things can be a little bit less consistent. And sometimes you'll find it'll just like overshoot your subject a little bit and find its way back or it won't drive the lens at the same speed when it's pulling focus between two subjects. And it's not the kind of thing that's going to completely ruin your shot unless you're working on a Hollywood movie. It's just kind of an irritation. A lot of other mirrorless cameras will give you the option to tap an object and continuously track that in video mode. Now with the Fujifilm, unfortunately, it'll only track any of the subjects that are available on the subject detection menu or faces and eyes. If you want to continuously track any other objects, you have to keep the autofocus box on top of them. I would love to have a video tracking mode similar to what we have in stills, but unfortunately that's not available yet. 
Now, when we think about the advantages of having a stacked sensor, we usually think about it in terms of slow motion recording and less rolling shutter. And that is definitely a benefit with the X-H2S here. But as well, because the sensor is now capable of reading out in 14-bit fast enough, we get a real benefit in image quality as well. So they've developed a new F-Log2 profile that takes advantage of that extra dynamic range. Unfortunately, now I have the full production LUT that I can put on there. And the F-Log2 footage is just absolutely beautiful. It's extremely detailed. And I love the fact that we've got a LUT for a standard profile, but also for their Eterna profile. So you can get that beautiful image, but with a little bit more dynamic range. It's excellent. Now this, there is a rolling shutter penalty when you switch over to F-Log2, but it's still better than a lot of other cameras like the X-T4. I would basically just always shoot an F-Log2 with this thing unless I needed high speed recording. It's just a lovely, lovely image. One of the things Fujifilm's been talking about quite a bit is the improved in-body image stabilization on the X-H2S. And I have definitely found that when we're using a hybrid lens-based and in-body image stabilization like we are now, the results are definitely improved, but I do find sometimes it can fight you a little bit, especially when you're panning. Now, if you're doing more locked off shots, I love that they have the IS boost mode in this. When you're shooting a fully static scene, I mean, it looks fantastic. It looks locked off like a tripod. I'd put it on par with the Panasonic mode, which is the best static stabilization I've ever seen. It's a really nice perk. All right, so now we're shooting in ProRes RAW, and this is something that I really wanted to test that we weren't able to with the pre-production camera. So if you have a Ninja 5 Plus, you get the ability to record 6.2K RAW. Right now we're shooting at 24 frames per second, and you also have the option to do a Blackmagic Video Assist and capture B-RAW if you're editing on DaVinci. That, unfortunately, I haven't been able to test. So for all of my Final Cut users, if you're shooting in ProRes RAW, one of the great things is you've got full control over all the image parameters. It lets you adjust. That means you've got the ISO drop down. You've got the full white balance adjustment on it. This is fully supported in Final Cut. Is there a real advantage to shooting RAW? I, we're not really finding it in terms of dynamic range, but if you really want to manipulate the white balance or have a lot of control over how much noise reduction is used, then RAW video is very useful for that, and this gives you that option. After using the X-H2S as a video camera for a while, I'm just kind of blown away by how capable it is at this price. And I would really compare it to the Panasonic GH6, but that I consider more like a dedicated video camera, because the GH6 has pretty compromised photographic capabilities, but compare that to the X-H2S, I mean, it is a brilliant photo camera, and then you're getting these extremely powerful video capabilities on top of that. This is one of the best hybrid video cameras ever made. Yes, I do definitely have some minor irritations with the autofocus and the in-body image stabilization, but they're just that, they're very minor issues. My biggest overall problem with the X-H2S for video is actually kind of the lens lineup. Like, they've done a great job of releasing new linear motor versions of a lot of their lenses that work great in autofocus, but uh, the manual focus experience uh, certainly leaves something to be desired, to put it nicely. And they're making steps to address it with something like the 18-120 to 120 power zoom lens, but I would really like to see some really fast aperture lenses with a great autofocus and an excellent manual focus experience as well. Something like what Panasonic's doing with their f1.7 zooms. If they do something like that, I might even consider switching. So who should buy this camera? Well, first, if you're a Fujifilm user, the stack chip is really what makes the difference here. I mean, overall, everything just feels a little bit quicker, a little bit more responsive. Now, you couple that fast shooting speed with excellent subject detection modes, which actually do work very well with their tracking system. And you can see how this camera would be excellent for sports action and wildlife photography. Now, as well, Jordan's also mentioned it has excellent video capabilities. So, you know, as a hybrid shooting camera, this has a lot of potential. And really, it does cement itself as Fujifilm's flagship APS-C camera. Now, it is a flagship camera with a flagship price point, and the point is that it actually gets you into competition with some other cameras across many different sensor sizes. I mean, OM System OM-1 in Micro Four Thirds is an interesting uh, option against this. Very fast shooting, very rugged, but definitely more niche suited for adventure, outdoor kind of stuff in my opinion. But also into some full frame options like the Canon R6, the Sony a7 IV. 
Now, yes, absolutely, both those cameras are full frame. They have fantastic image quality, low light performance for sure. But there are still some drawbacks compared to this camera. I mean, first off, an APS-C platform, you get more compact lens, you get the extra distance on your telephotos. That's always nice when you're trying to do sports and action on the go. But also, if you take, for example, the Canon R6, it doesn't have that fast to readout speed in electronic shutter mode. Certainly cannot touch the burst rates that this camera can handle. And it's a little bit less megapixels as well. And then you look at the Sony a7 IV, well, that's an even slower readout speed, which really holds it back. It doesn't come anywhere close to the burst rates here. Electronic shutter, you gotta watch out for things like, you know, strange diagonals from that rolling shutter. As well, the video capabilities here on the Fujifilm exceed those two cameras in a lot of ways. So. Overall, I think, although you're in a similar price point, this is such a versatile package. You can pretty much put into any scenario and it can do well. So is this camera the right one for you? Well, hopefully we help you guys decide if this jack of all trades and even master of some is a good option, but do leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Check out the sample galleries that we shot, deepreview.com, link in the descriptions below. Like, subscribe, click that notification bell because we love seeing you and we hope you love seeing us too. And for both Jordan and I, we'll see you again shortly for another episode of Deep Review TV.